And then there was one, as in one game ball left to hand out. We had some teams playing playoff football, some fighting to get into the postseason. It all made for some excellent nominees. Hi again, everyone. Jody Norstead with Midco Sports here, and I'm excited to crown our final Midco Sports game ball winner of the season, courtesy of our great sponsors, Farmers Union Insurance. And this week, I got to give some love to a man, Dan Brave, who's been lighting it up all season and almost single-handedly rallied his team back from a 14-point second-half deficit to defeat Legacy on Friday. I'm talking about senior wide receiver Carson Jablonski. Stick around for more on his day. It'll be worth it. As for what I like to call the best of the rest, Let's take a look at our top performers list. Before that, I want to get a few honorable mentions out of the way. Four really good running backs in the EDC come to mind. West Fargo's Parker Nelson, Shanley's Aiden Devine, Cheyenne's Josh Hendricks, and Red River's Garen Sattler all had really good games this past week and have been outstanding all season, so props to you fellas. All right, let's get to it. We lead off with a guy who saw his season come to an end on Saturday, Tyson Ingett of Ray Powers Lake, had a fabulous year doing whatever was asked of him by the coaching staff. He passed for 175 yards and two touchdowns, rushed for another 155 and three scores. Then on defense, listen to this, 11 solo tackles, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. The only thing he didn't do was come out a winner on the scoreboard, falling to Surrey 44 to 38, but Engett is a dude. Seniors Jace Nelson and Tyler Lindstrom were also outstanding all year for that team. I guess the good news for Ingot, he's a junior, so he'll be back and a candidate for preseason nine-man player of the year next season. Second seeded Kindred survived a scare on Saturday against Thompson 30 to 28. The Vikings needed every ounce of effort from Trey Heinrich. The junior running back and linebacker rushed for 150 yards and two scores while catching a TD pass as well. On defense, he wreaked havoc in the backfield with four tackles for loss, including a sack. Heinrich will be asked to do a lot again this week against Langdon Edmore Munich. Cavaliers' Trevor Hinkle wasn't planning to play quarterback on Saturday with the season on the line, but that didn't stop him from putting up top performer numbers. The Tornadoes' regular starter Bryson Clem smashed his throwing hand on a helmet early in the game, so Hinkle stepped in and completed his only two pass attempts for touchdowns. Boy, I wonder what his QBR would be then. He also racked up 123 yards and two touchdowns on the ground against a good Winemere Lidgerwood team. Defensively, he made 10 tackles, picked off a couple of passes, and forced and recovered a fumble, helping the Tornadoes route the Warbirds 52 to six. Well done, Trevor, well done. This next guy was my preseason player of the year in 9B, and now you see why. Chris Jenner put the team on his back once again as Surrey avenged its early season loss to Ray Powers late by defeating them in the postseason 44 to 38. Jenner with another day at the office, 36 carries, 370 yards and five touchdowns. He was busy on defense too, making six solo stops. Next for Jenner and Surrey, the Cavalier Tornadoes I was just talking about. That'll be a fun postseason matchup. Well, the top team in nine man still looks like the top team in nine man. That's Lamore Litchville Marion. Junior Brady Lettenmeyer punished the Patriots of Mayport CG by rushing for 185 yards and four touchdowns. Lettenmeyer, Corbin Potts, Colton Ness, and company get the Cinderella's of the tournament in the quarterfinal round, with Grant County Flasher coming to town. The Storm are the only unseeded team to reach the quarterfinals. And how about this? They've won both playoff games on the road. A few games produced top performers from both the winning and losing teams. North and Wapaton was that great of a battle. Let's start with the winning side of it. Mason Lockwood was tough to lock up. The senior runs with authority, and he did that against Wapaton, piling up 187 yards and four scores on 22 carries. That helped North win it 49-42 to secure the three seed in the playoffs. And get this, it'll be a rematch with Wapaton this Friday. More from the Huskies in a moment. Kyle Odenbach wrapped up his high school career with perhaps his best game. The Thompson quarterback passed it 43 times, completing 34 of those for nearly 400 yards and four touchdowns. An absolutely remarkable effort, but unfortunately for the Tommies, it just wasn't quite enough as Kindred escaped with the 30-28 win. Tip of the cap to those Tommies, though. Back to that Wapton North game for more. Blake Schaefer might have the record for most times on this list this year. The Huskies' air raid offense has been outstanding because of him. 
He finished the night 32 of 40 for 357 yards and four touchdowns, plus a pair of rushing scores. Every time you thought Fargo North was pulling away, Schaefer and that offense would pull off something wild to get back into it. Corey Ulich deserves some love too with his 14 catch, 144 yard performance, including a touchdown. Let's see if Husky Spartans, the sequel is just as good as the, as the regular one. They square off in the quarterfinal round on Friday night. Harvey Wells County was a trendy upset pick in 11B, but Owen Wiersma and Central Cass weren't having any of that conversation. The Squirrels junior running back erupted for 223 rushing yards and three touchdowns. One of those being a passing score by, by the way, with an early Halloween trick for a treat. Wiersma and the Squirrels are set to do battle with top-seeded Hillsborough Center Valley in the quarterfinal round. Remember, the Squirrels are responsible for the Burroughs' only loss of the season all the way back in August. We told you our game ball winner was Amanda and Brave. Well, so is our final player on the top performers list. Lincoln Wiseman has been stronger and stronger throughout the season, and he closed out the regular season with his best game of the year. Carrying the ball 32 times for 230 yards and two touchdowns, one in each half in the win over Legacy. Wiseman and that rushing attack give them another dimension, one that they'll need going up against Shanley this Friday in a playoff game you can watch live on Midco Sports. And if you tune in, you'll also see our reigning game ball winner. That's because Carson Jablonski is getting the hardware following his outstanding second half in the 32-28 victory over those Sabres. Jablonski hauled in seven passes for 170 yards and two touchdowns, including what turned out to be the game winner. He also made two game-winning plays in the fourth quarter. He chased down the legacy receiver here and knocked the ball loose, turning a touchdown into a touchback. Then he sealed the victory with an interception late. Jablonski is the lone receiver in the WDA to top 1,000 receiving yards. His closest competition is his teammate, Tri Frank, at 371 yards. So congrats to Carson and the rest of the Braves. Jablonski will go up against the EDC's lone 1,000-yard receiver on Friday night in Shanley's John Gores. And we're looking forward to bringing you the action live on Midco Sports and Midco Sports Plus. Once again, this is the last game ball announcement of the season, so a few shout outs are needed. Thanks to our hardworking staff that shoots games each week, and a special thanks to Jack Nyson, who does a fantastic job of editing these segments. Thanks to our sponsor, Farmers Union Insurance, and thanks to all of you who submitted nominations. And perhaps most importantly, thank you for watching. We really love highlighting these performances each and every week. Enjoy the playoff games this weekend, everyone. We'll see you later.